the world of Chinese. My name is Yuan Zhang, lecturer in linguistics and the languages of China. I'm a native speaker of Chinese. Let me start by showing you what I plan to do for this series. So each time. I will either talk about the Shanghainese language itself, or I will talk about something related to Shanghai society and the Shanghai community. Today is a general introduction about Shanghainese. If you take a look at this map, against the red arrow, there is a striped patch, which is what we call. The area for Wu languages. In this picture, on the right, you see an overview of the dialects in China, where, against the red arrow again,、um, the red patch shows the Wu languages area, which is enlarged on the left. So. On the left, the major cities are usually related to the major dialects in the Wu dialect area. So you see, Shanghai, Suzhou, Ningbo, Shaoxing, and Wenzhou, and Jinghua. They are all related to distinct dialects. In total, the Wu languages. Have 80 million speakers. That's ranked the second largest cluster of languages in China and the tenth in the world. This is a map of Greater Shanghai. It has an area of 6,340 square kilometers. And the registered regular residents there, by the year 2019, is around 24 million, 24.28 million to be exact. How many speakers of Chinese are there in this area? Well, this is harder to tell, but. What we can find is a record related to the census in the year 2013. At that time, there was a language survey. So, of the regular residents,、um, which accounts for 24.15 million people there, at that time, 97 percent of people claim themselves to be speakers of Mandarin. That is also called Putonghua, General Chinese, and also、um, among this population of regular residents, eighty-one point four percent of people claim themselves to be speakers of Shanghainese. So we can say that、um, many people living in Shanghai are bilinguals. And so, what we can also deduce is that in the year 2020,、um, there could be more than 20 million speakers of Chinese. Something about the historical development of the language. Early Chinese、um, is said to be evolved from the mixture of Middle Chinese. With the indigenous Bai Yue language or languages, so it took shape in the span from the Spring and Autumn period to the Han dynasties, which is a long period. The second phase is modern Chinese, which spans between 1843 to mid 1950s. 1843 is the year. Immediately after the First Opium War, 
when Shanghai became a trading port open to the Western powers, following the signing of the Treaty of Nanjing, and the mid 1950s marked the introduction by the Chinese People's Republic of China's、um, central government the introduction of a series of language reform measures, which had great impacts on all dialects in China, because it was at that time. When Mandarin and also the related Putonghua Standard Chinese、um, was explicitly promoted. For contemporary Shanghainese, that is the language spoken by people、um, since the 1950s, there are three variants. First, the old variant, that is typically spoken by people born in the 1920s and 30s, and it overlaps a lot with modern Shanghainese. You know,、uh, Shanghainese used between 1843 and the 1950s, and it is still a variant which is widely used in the suburban areas of Shanghai, with a Intending to be pejorative, suburban areas—that's the outskirts of the downtown area of Shanghai.、Um, if you are there, you find that this is a vast stretch of area, and、um, it is used even among the younger people there. The middle variant of Shanghainese, contemporary Shanghainese, is now commonly taken to be the standard variant. That is.、Um, Often the variant that is being taught in textbooks and radio programs, like、um, this program, and it is the variant used by the majority of middle-aged people in the urban areas of Shanghai. By middle-aged, I mean people born、um, between the 1960s and before the 1990s. The new variant, it is. The variant mostly used by very young people in the urban area, and it has some distinct phonetic and lexical features, but certainly it also overlaps a lot with the middle variant, and it is often cold mixed with Putonghua or standard Mandarin. That is because many young people don't really know how to express the exact. Concepts and the ideas in in Shanghainese proper. Now I want to give you a taste of Shanghainese by reading a paragraph first in Mandarin and then in Middle Shanghainese. The paragraph is taken from a recent and so-called very Shanghainese novel called. Fan Hua, and in English it is called Blossoms. Mandarin. 独上阁楼，最好是夜里。过去的味道，梁朝伟《阿飞正传》结尾的样子。电灯下面数钞票，数好放进西装内袋，再数一沓，清爽放入口袋。再摸出一副扑克牌，细看，再摸出一副来，然后是梳头，三七分头，对镜子细细梳好，全身笔挺，透出骨头里的懒散，最后关灯。这个片段是最上海的，最阁楼。Now, middle Shanghainese. 独上阁楼，最好是夜里。过去的味道，梁朝伟《阿飞正传》结尾的样子。电灯下头数钞票，数好摆进西装内袋，再数一沓，清爽摆到袋袋里，再摸出一副扑克牌细看，再摸出一副来。然后是梳头。
，三七分头，对镜子细细思考，全身笔挺，透出骨头里的泪水。最后，关灯，迭个片段是最上海的，最格楼。Well, I must say that the written language stands between the Chinese and its proper expression. Well, what you can find is that、um, Chinese is indeed very unique. You will probably agree with me that it is mutually unintelligible with Mandarin, and in fact,、um, because I have knowledge of Cantonese as well. Um, I used to work in Hong Kong for a long time, more than twenty years.、Um, I can tell you that、um, Chinese is also mutually unintelligible with Mandarin,、uh, with Cantonese. But if you are in the Wu languages dialect area or Wu dialect area, you find that、um, Chinese. Is mutually intelligible with most of the Wu Chinese, especially like、um, Ningbo dialect and Suzhou dialect. Probably with the exception for Wenzhou Wu dialect,、um, which is a bit more unique. What also makes Chinese unique compared with、um, Mandarin is that. It has five tones. Well, Mandarin has four, and、uh, Cantonese has nine. What is more interesting is that、um, Chinese has a rich tone sandy system. What do we mean by tone sandy? Well, for Chinese, you know that、um, each syllable in Chinese stands for one character. Or、oh, this is probably not the right way of saying it, but we can say that in Chinese,、um, each character is usually equivalent to one syllable, and each syllable has a fixed tonal value that differentiates、um, among different meanings. So、um, when you have two syllables put together in meaningful. In a meaningful lexical form, then、um, the tones will be affected by the neighboring tones, so、um, the tonal values will change. What、uh, if we had three tones or three characters put together, or four or five? Well, for Chinese, then the tonal values of each can be affected. So when you Pronounce a sentence, then、um, you keep on、um, having tone sandy, and it is very difficult for you to try to mark down the tones because、uh, you have to change the tonal value in the context. Next is that、um, Chinese、um, has a unique lexicon. If you read Mandarin, sometimes you can tell. Which words are borrowed from Chinese? And Chinese certainly has an idiosyncratic grammar, even though that this aspect has been very much understudied. And finally, believe it or not, Chinese is among the Chinese,、uh, the variants of Chinese. Chinese is the most recorded in written form, next only to Mandarin. Especially for that historical period,、uh, which is what we call the modern Chinese period, between 1843 and the 1950s. For that period, a lot of scripts in Chinese were published, especially. Are、uh, due to the great efforts of Western missionaries. That is something we'll return to later. That is a very interesting topic for me. So, from a sociolinguistic point of view, 
there is also a very interesting um, hot topic um, that is um, often picked up recently. Is Chinese endangered or not? Well, for a lot of experts who um, have um, informed knowledge about um, endangered language studies, like many of my colleagues at SAWAS, they would probably say, um, at first impression, they would probably say that, um, no, Chinese is still very safe because the language has 20 million speakers. But then um, for a lot of people who are worried about the future of Chinese, especially in Shanghai, they would say, yes, Chinese is very much endangered because it is quickly losing a lot of its unique, distinct features, uh, especially in, in terms of um, phonetics and in terms of, um, um, let's say, uh, the, the study of um, lexical aspects of the language. Because Chinese used to be considered as a one language representative of the Wu languages. But then it is quickly losing a lot of its distinct features at too fast a pace within a short span of 30 years. Um, now people would say that Suzhou dialect is a representative Wu language. Chinese, well, maybe not because it is so often used um, with a lot of code switching between Chinese and Mandarin. That is, uh, people start with a sentence in Chinese, but then they shift to the use of Mandarin terms in the middle because they don't know how to express them in proper Chinese. This is alarming. And um, <clears throat> for a lot of people living in Shanghai, they will say that <clears throat> losing Chinese means the loss of Chinese culture. Um, believe it or not, again, um, revolution has um, um, removed a lot of cultural relics in Shanghai, but then a lot of former cultural values still exist uh, with great resilience um, in the Shanghai language itself. And um, just a little bit more about that aspect is that um, uh, we can say that after revolution, people tried hard to have a better life um, in China and in Shanghai, but then now they wake up to find that um, in between, uh, they have lost their own dialect or language, which is a great pity, isn't it? Many times, and well, this is because of the promotion of Mandarin. There's nothing wrong with the promotion of Mandarin, but then it is still a great pity uh, to see your own language being lost right, um, as a result. So now it's getting a bit clear why um, I'm trying to promote or at least to introduce Chinese to more people here. One reason I think uh, it's um, always interesting for people interested in knowing about different languages, uh, that is what we call language buffs. It is always interesting for them to get to know the wonder of a new language. This time um, we're talking about a Chinese language, which is now Mandarin, yet it is still a Han language. It is probably not easy to find a Chinese who can speak both Cantonese and Shanghainese, in addition to Mandarin, which um, every Chinese can probably speak. And uh, this is also from my experience. Um, and uh, it is probably even rarer for us to find a native speaker of English who has this, these feats, that is, um, I have never met a native speaker of English um, who can speak both Chinese and Cantonese fluently.
So this is a challenge um, I hope the English native speakers can meet. Um, the second reason for us to promote Chinese here is to invite people to experience Chinese culture through the language. You may find yourselves in Shanghai one day and it will be a good opportunity for you to use the language there and you'll be responded with great warmth by the local people. The third reason is um, related to the idea of um, Chinese being endangered. We can't certainly go back to the past by trying to speak um, modern Chinese again, that is using a lot of its phonetic features there. Um, I don't think it is ever possible to do that. But then what we can still do is to use Chinese more, think about Chinese rather than using Mandarin only. And this is one, I believe, important way to invigorate the language. So um, I want to encourage more people to speak it and even more people to learn about it, to know that there is an important language in China and there is also an important cluster of languages called Wu languages in China, um, which is often um, unduly represented only by Mandarin. Because if you take a look at the charts of the most used languages in the world, you don't see Wu languages. Because Wu languages mysteriously have been um, swallowed by Mandarin. So you only see Mandarin there. What are the prerequisites and requirements for you to learn Chinese if you want to? Uh, this is something I'm going to do, in fact. Well, um, we can take it as a module, uh, which has never been taught at SOAS even, uh, even though they teach um, Mandarin, Cantonese, and the Ming Nan uh, dialects there. Well, you need to be curious about languages. And it would be a plus for you to know some, some Chinese characters that will make it easier for us to quote sentences. Even though um, I really plan to introduce a romanization system for Chinese, um, which is in fact different from the Romanized system for Mandarin, which is called Pinyin as well. So it is the Chinese Pinyin system. And I hope you'll be willing to reflect on the structure of the language and you'll be willing to do some practices, juice with me. And I will end this session and every session afterwards with some recommended links, which I um, sometimes I, I can't uh, show you the linked content because of because of copyright reasons. But then at least you can click on the links and view for yourselves.